Greetings and salutations, David Duford here with another success story. I'm here with our uh, newer agent, Mr. Rich Torno. He is a final expense telesales agent. He's been working with Tim Hildebrand, DeFord Insurance Group's telesales trainer. And uh, we're here to basically catalog uh, Rich's success early on in the business. I got some texts over here just a minute ago. In just a few short weeks, he's had 11 sales right out the gate as a new agent, over 6,600 in premium and uh, has really been doing everything right getting started. And we like to profile those agents who have success in our company, just to show you that what is possible with good mentorship, good leads and good direction, and to really inspire those of you out there who are looking for a business model where mentorship is really a big part of it and giving yourself the best chance of success to, to find it here really at the Ford Insurance Group. So let's go ahead and first start off with uh, Rich. Uh, say hello, Rich, how you doing, man? Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, David. Hey, thank you for being here. I, I always appreciate it when agents come on and, and jump on board these live trainings and are willing to kind of share their story. So thank you very much. Get back to you in just a second. Let me bring on Tim. Uh, Tim Hildebrand, our uh, uh, telesales trainer. Uh, say hello and introduce yourself a little bit. Hello, I'm Tim Hildebrand. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for being here. All right. So Rich, come back on. Tell us a little bit about yourself how you ended up here in the wonderful world of insurance sales and um, why you're with the Ford Insurance Group. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I, before I went, came into the insurance industry, um, I was in the the tech industry. So I was uh, selling SaaS, um, you know, started as a sales development rep and then into an account executive role. Um, things weren't really working out with the company that I was with. Um, I kind of wanted to do essentially be my own boss, right? Um, I always had an entrepreneur spirit. I just needed to find the right vehicle. Um, I had my insurance license probably back in 2010, 2011. Um, I was with an MLM company, so I had to deal with all that MLM stuff. So I it wasn't for me, which really kind of like dimmed me down about, you know, kind of like turned me away from life insurance right. in general. But I still, I still saw it as a, you know, AI had life insurance. But I always felt that, you know, life insurance is very necessary. So um, you know, fast forward uh, ten over ten years. You know, I was I was I came across one of your one of your videos, uh, one of your you know your YouTube. I was following you. I was you know kind of just you know seeing what you were about. And uh, what really struck me was the uh, uh, webinar that you made about making five hundred thousand dollars a year within you know first you know one to five years. Um, you know, s s you know selling final expense insurance and a combination of Medicare advantage. So um, that really, you know, prompted me to want to say, you know what, there's more, probably more to this. You know, you said that the, the senior industry is a, is a very big industry, you know, had all the facts there. So it's like, it wasn't hard for me to, to, to want to, to, to make a decision to try and, and pursue that career. Um, I, I, so I, I, you know, I, 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 I onboarded back in, in February with uh, D4 group. Before that I was with another IMO that, you know, honestly, just we weren't aligned with, with, uh, with selling five months. Right? So it was just that they were pushing something totally different, you know, right. kind of just that, you know what, I need to go where I need to go. So, you know, I wound up in with, with D Ford and, and insurance group from mid February of last year. Uh, and then, so I, I officially started, you know, uh, making calls and, 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 and going through that whole, you know, telesales process, probably mainly toward the end of February, the beginning of, of, of March. And it's up this year, right? Of this year, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 2023. Yeah, yeah. I'm making sure of that. I, I figured that was okay. So I want to make sure. I, I want to hit on a couple of things here. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of talk and hype on YouTube. Maybe it's just me because I'm a geek for YouTube. But there's a lot of influencers in the, in the SaaS space. It's, and that's a software as a service, right? So there's a lot of these influencers that sell, you know, this product and it's, it can be a host of different things. Can you do a comparison between what your experience has been in the SaaS world and maybe a long time ago versus what it's like to sell insurance? I just think it would be good to have a comparison. Um, so people who are watching this later, maybe who are looking at that can kind of have a more sober analysis between both. Well, I mean, the SaaS industry, for the most part, is going to be business to business. Uh, and um, the product that I was uh, was selling wasn't in insurance at all. It, it, it was uh, contact data um, was the thing. Um, and so the difference is when you're when you're when you're in business to business, you're dealing with a whole lot of like, you know, um, uh, 
stakeholders, a whole lot of decision makers. Like you, you, you got at least a minimum of five decision makers before they actually on, you know, onboard a product. Whereas, you know, with, with life insurance, you're really only having to talk to the person who's, you know, the insured policy owner. I mean, there's, you know, the spouse, uh, which for my case, was a lot more, you know, my kind of like what I wanted to do. I, I didn't want to have to deal with multiple decision makers yeah. and then find out, you know, a month, two months later that they're not, they're not in, they're not into it. Uh, yes. SaaS industry is, so, is a software as a service. There it uh, is. Right. For example, Zoom is a software um, that we're using to, you know, that they offer for businesses to use. Yeah. So like, like a Salesforce, it's a, a corporate Correct. CRM. Uh, a guy I roll with jujitsu, he reps them and he'll go into companies and, you know, they do CRM work, but it's enormous organizations, right? So it's very, it's mm -hmm. a slow, it's a longer sales cycle, big money when the deal hits, but a lot of stakeholders involved. So, yeah, so it's, it's I, I, the one thing I think to take from that is final expense is way simpler. <laughs> a lot <laughs> as far more as closing simpler. goes, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's, I think a, a big deal, you know, cause if you need to make money now, you know, I used to be an Aramark, which we were selling uniforms, you know, just stuff as a service, uh, mm -hmm. or stuff as a sale or whatever. And, um, you know, even those sales cycles took longer and the pay wasn't that good, but final expense, man, you just get in there. You, it's all really comes down to your work ethic and the time on task. And obviously knowing a good script and having somebody in your corner to coach you through it. But the the time horizon get up and running is like super fast. You know, the sales funnel funnels one call close real quick, you know, so mm -hmm. a very, very big thing. Um, let's shift gears. I want to talk about the MLM stuff. And I always like doing this because your trajectory getting in the business, very normal for the average person. And people find out about this after the fact. It's usually not a before the fact. They find out after, why does this company talk about recruiting constantly? Or, you know, um, why are they doing all the hoopla and the Kool-Aid? And it's just, you know, you just find out after and it puts a bad taste in people's mouth. So I always feel a big part of it for me is I need to make you all aware out there that there is MLM. Uh, it is a pernicious force. It's not a force for good. Uh, it causes a lot of failure. And um, a lot of people leave this wonderful business jaded before they have a real opportunity. So can you kind of speak on, you know, like, what MLM looked like to you? Like, what were you running into that were like red flags? Kind of think of this audience as like, if they're brand new to the business, kind of a share your experience. So maybe at the worst case, they can avoid it altogether. Yeah. So, I mean, with, with multi-level marketing companies, uh, whatever product you're selling, it, it, even if it is, you know, a, a good product, the, the, in, in most cases, they're going to, they're going to push you more to recruit people to, share this information you know with people that's how they that's how they you know pronounce it you know um but the problem is is that you know there's only so many people that you can share this information to and and at the end of the day you wind up ruining the relationship of having to try and and recruit people or share the information with people when realistically you know when you come into the business especially selling life insurance like you you should the only thing that should be on your mind is you know, pushing the product, helping people. Um, as far as recruiting, like if you're not, in my opinion, if if you can't show me that you know how to produce, like why am I going to follow you? Right. So, yeah, I mean, go go ahead. Yeah. And so in MLM, you know, you you you're in there. You're just like you know, like what am I doing? Am I producing or am I recruiting? It's like, and you're pull, you're you're pulled in so many different directions where. For me, like I just want to sell a, a product. Like I want to pr promote a good product. So um, I didn't like that, and you know, just just the, my my upline was just you know, it just it just started getting really, really frustrating. So I just said, you know what, I'm 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 done. I'm I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, and and that's how most agents leave, you know, because that's that's the experience they have. It's entirely unprofessional. It's not about what you originally thought it was, which is helping people. It turns into some recruiting scheme. And lo and behold, before you know it, the only people making money are at the top of the food chain because they're they're either getting your friends and family to sell them. Some of these places don't even offer you a cut of the action in exchange for access to your friends and family. Um, one particular organization sells leads that are really just 
basically data that are acquired at pennies on the dollar, but sold for like $10, $11 each. And they're recycled over and over. And they're like, oh, they say they're not. And they make millions of dollars a week just on the recycling of that. So they use the insurance as a way to inspire you, but then push their leads to you to buy. And that's where they make their money. And uh, you're as much of the product and as the target as you would think the clients that we sell insurance to be. You know, and these are the features of LMMs. I say all this because you obviously know this. I'm not telling you anything new, Rich. But for those of you out there who are brand new to the insurance business, please watch out, especially in the life insurance business. I would wager that four out of five, three out of four agencies total uh, that you run into are an MLM scheme. And they're going to operate in this way of heavy recruitment focus, selling you junk leads that are really just a cash cow for the company. And they just believe in the shotgun method of cycling the stuff over and over and over again. So just, uh, and like Steve says here, they tell you recruiting is more important than selling. Well, if that was true, how would anybody make any freaking money? So it's like, well, they sell you leads. They sell you this other stuff. You know, they ask you to attend events and charge out the nose for them. And there's a way to monetize you. And that's the thing you got to be aware of that a lot of people aren't. If, if there's one message you take from that, have your guard up, guys, uh, in the life insurance business. Because that's a very common feature. And there's other scams that organizations do that um, we can get into a later date. And I've talked about extensively, but it's business is great, but you got to really be careful who you do business with. So let's talk about telesales, Rich. You know, that's you could also sell final expense either face to face or over the phone, but you chose the telesales route. Can you give the audience your reasoning why you opted to sell over the phone as opposed to in person? Yeah. So I mean. I mean, personally, I, 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 you know, I, I, I just want to be able to, you know, just have the comforts of being in an office, you know, kind of working remotely, um, not having go to go like all, all over, all over the city, you know, just to do business. I mean, that's just like my, like what I prefer. Um, I mean, I chose telesales because I really have essentially a background. I came from like SAS, so we cold called every single day we were we were booking appointments every single day for the account executive and then when i became an account executive you know which is basically the closer the one that actually makes the sell you know i was i was i was getting appointments set for me so um essentially just just going into the to life insurance um and and being a telesales um you know agent that just made for me it was just a good fit um for what i've already was experiencing or my prior experience yeah, so you already had the stuff. You've already been through it. You've been if you can do cold calling, man, you can call leads. You know, that's a that's a big step up, I'm sure. So, and, and I mentioned that because what we do at DeFord Insurance Group, we support both strategies, either exclusively face to face or exclusively telesales. And what y'all should do if you're wondering which route should I go, which is best, it's kind of like what Rich said in so many words. He he followed what his strengths were. He already had the baseline of experience in telesales, so it just makes sense to go the telesales route. Um, and his gut, probably, I was speaking for Rich, but I say it probably said, yeah, I probably should do telesales. Likewise, if you're in that position, follow your instincts. If you're just more of a face-to-face -face person, there's a lot of business opportunity. There's an influencer right now that's putting out content that's saying face-to-face -face is awkward. It's weird. People don't want you over because of COVID. It's it's uh, it's not even true. It's not true. And uh, it's a great model. But it, and the thing is, is I'm not to say, and I hear obviously saying face to face is best and tell self sucks. It's not an honest depiction. There's opportunity with both of those. But what you need to do is figure out who you are through a process of vetting and, and due diligence to figure out which process is best for you. Because some people should be tell self. They shouldn't go in front of people. Likewise, the inverse could be true. All we care about at DeFord Insurance Group is what's best for you so we can help make you money, ultimately. And that's what you should be concerned if you're with us or anybody else. Uh, and and then finding that one thing that your strengths lie in. So um, I'm going to bring Tim in here. And Tim, one of the things that we changed up at the beginning of the year in January is that I went from kind of an entrepreneurially focused agent model of recruiting, good training, but not a lot of hands-on, to we've entirely inverted what we've done we have great training from self-study material, but the big difference now in what we do is mentorship oriented. We, every agent that DeFord's insurance group or every agent that joins DeFord Insurance Group gets one-on-one -on -one mentorship twice a day, opportunities for role-playing script development. And, and I, I feel like a broken record saying this, but it's been game-changing. The amount of agents that are successful, the amount of agents that are 
writing business versus what we used to do. It's, it's, it's amazing. I'd like you to talk, kind of talk about a little bit, what's that training like for people who may not be familiar with our model and, and kind of relate how Rich followed that process, kind of if you could take him through it and how agents can expect to get from us if they went through it. Yeah, primarily success is going to come from the agent's sort of prior experience, but also their willingness to be um, open to the training and adjust what they're doing just because we're telling you, like we're not telling you anything that's not golden. We're not testing things out on you. We're telling you tried and true things that if you will do them, you will be successful. Um, any one of our coaches will tell you, and even Dave will tell you just flat out, if you do what we say, you will be successful. It's really difficult not to be successful if you're complying with the training, especially when I'm one-on-one -on -one with you and I'm giving you direct feedback on exactly what, you know, you're sort of lacking or your weakness is there and you can pick it up. So to Rich's credit, Rich was one of those, um, special folks who was willing to really engage and listen and do what was put in front of him. He totally understands that coming from his life experience. He knows he needs to have that to go the right direction as quickly as possible instead of trying to pick it up on his own as he gets there. Um, so to me, that's been the biggest, the biggest um, indicator, your sales experience, plus, you know, spending the full time like Rich is to blast it out. But also mainly he could do all those things and still fail if he just wasn't kind of receptive or humble to receive the new information. To me, that's the biggest thing that we're yeah. seeing. Rich, can you comment on kind of what your experience has been like with Tim as your mentor? Because I, I think it's just most agents don't have this in other organizations. They don't have anybody to talk to. Very few people return their, their phone calls. Very frustrating experience. Can you kind of talk about like the value that you've gotten out of the mentorship program, please? Yeah, it's uh, it's an it's it was amazing. I mean, honestly, I, I came into uh, DeFord Insurance and I said, you know what, like I tried selling final expense um, with this part and my IMO who didn't have the coaching that I was looking for, didn't have the one on one that I was looking for. Um, and so coming into this, yeah, like I had some some background. I had, you know, sales experience. You know, I went through some trainings and some sales training, but I, I, I told myself, like, I need to empty myself of what I know and just listen to this man. And so um, I, I came in there, I said, you know, I, I said, you know, whatever, whatever Tim you want me to do, if you want me to, you know, hop on one leg while I'm doing the script, I'll do it. You know, like, like whatever, whatever needs to happen so I can have the success that you were having, I'm going to do it. And so, um, uh, I, 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 I went in, I, I looked at the script. Um, I practiced the script. Uh, and, and, you know, when I, when I was making my dials, making my calls, I'm, I'm staying as close to the script as possible. Are there going to be instances where, you know, like it, it just comes off just a natural flow of conversation where like, it just, it veers off the script. Like, yeah, that's going to happen. But like this, the, the script was really Im important to me because what I was doing with my script prior to this wasn't working. Right. And so when I, when I implemented the script, when I took the coaching, when I listened to Tim, um, that's when the sales started coming in. That's when, when, you know, what we say, like, we want, we want people who are, um, you know, easy sales, you know, uh, they come in, they're, they're, you know, they're, it was an easy sell, but realistically, if you implement the script, if you implement the coaching, like everything becomes a natural, easy sell, right. Um, objections become handled prior to actually, you know, the closing portion of, 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 of the call. So. Yeah, the the and I, I can relate just as 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 a business owner prior to as owning this business, of course, we didn't have any kind of one-on-one -on -one mentorship nearly to the extent that we do now. And I've read I've realized in this growth period that our agency is going through right now, and, and the amount of success that we're getting is that that there is something about one-on-one -on -one mentorship that even if you've got great training, even if you see good YouTube videos like of what I do, a lot of you out there are going to miss really important key elements that make or break you. Sometimes it's not something that's like completely brand new that makes a difference. It's the execution of a small little thing that you've taken for granted or you've, you know, really haven't thought twice about and somebody holding you accountable to that process. And that's why mentorship has been such a winner for us. And I, I can't stop talking about how awesome it's been because I've seen the other side 
And our training was great before we went into the mentorship model. But what was missing was that one-on-one -on -one element that just clears the, 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 the slate. It answers the questions. It keeps you accountable. And it makes such a huge dramatic difference. And uh, I just can't, uh, it's just unbelievable the results. Tim, last month in February, this new agent, we, ha we have a metric that we track. It's our new agent success metric. And what that measures is for the month, how many agents who joined, went through the mentorship gauntlet week where we go into detail on training, coaching, one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera, and buy leads like they should, and then sell that first week. How many are actually selling? And we're at 80%. That's incredible. On the face-to-face -face side, we're at 95% for the month of February. And the reason that's powerful is because 95% of agents fail the business. It's crazy. But that's the power of a well-tuned, focused amount of training that, frankly, this business is really just deprived of. A lot of agents are. So to wrap this up, Rich, if you could... Um, Three pieces of advice for telesales. Um, as I, I'm on you, I'm a YouTuber. I'm always watching what other YouTubers are doing. I was looking for insight. The content on telesales brings in the most views because people are and, and uh, they're they're curious about it, but they're also uh, aware that you know it's tougher, and people are looking for answers. And you've had great success out the gate. Can you please explain to us, kind of like give us like two or three tips that really make it for you as far as your success in telesales that you would tell somebody who's brand new? Yeah, if you're if you're looking to get into telesales, like you need you're you're gonna need to be able to connect with people. Um and so I mean I think the the biggest thing that you know what really makes you know me like be able to to connect with people is just I I really do care. Like I really care about the person I'm talking about. I really passionately want to help them. And you know if you're coming into the, you know, that, that, if you're coming into telesales and you're, you know, you're, you just, you just, you got to be able to like connect with these people and show that you truly care um, and listen to them, you know, listen to their needs. Because once, once you're, once you connect in that sense, everything just becomes a natural flow. Um, the other thing is, is with telesales that I want to give advice to is, is, you know, you got to have a good coach. You got to have a good mentor. You got to have, you got to have people that are just there to 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 tell you like okay this is what you need help on um and you got to be you, you got to be coachable it doesn't matter where you came from or what you know like i i came from a lot i came i knew i know a lot but you got to be coachable you got to be able to take it you got to be able to implement it and most of all you got to make those dials <laughs> you can't you can't you can't hope to succeed in telesales if you're not making any dials minimum like tim always says like if you're if you're busy a minimum of a hundred dials. If you're busy, you know, you're talking to people. Um, if you're not as busy, you know, like 200 dials, like those are like the minimums. Like you a should, day people, a day, a day, a day. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. A day, you know, have, a day. Yeah. Then I came into the mindset of like, you know, when I'm starting, like I'm going to get to a point where I'm making at least one sale a day, one sale a day. And then after that, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, okay, now let's try and get to two sales a day. Let's try and get to two, like set your, set your goals minimums. You know, yeah, you want a overall scheme of things, but like make, make minor, you know, small goals, like every single day, like I'm going to do at least a $200, 100 to $200. And then I'm going to at least sell one. Right. So hey. that's, 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 that's my advice. Thank you. So, so care and put the work in, go figure, you know? <laughs> Tim, you want to add anything to that advice for anybody aspiring to sell over the phone to make it work? There is no way that you can make sales, even dialing 300, 400 a day, if you don't care about people and win their trust and listen to them closely. You have to do that. Yeah, man, it's 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 a um, it's an interesting business telesales. And we were, I was talking to another agent and they were complaining because their leads weren't working. The leads were terrible. And, you know, it's the same leads that we all work, Facebook leads. And we started asking how much actual activity you're doing. Just call them like 40 people a day, 40 calls. I'm like, well, of course you're not making sales because you're not putting the work in. Her excuse was, well, we were, it was working just fine. I'm like, well, that was, uh, that was an aberration. It's not supposed to be that easy. It's supposed to be several hundred calls a day. Uh, we have Chris, who we had on a couple months ago, Christopher um, Sorrentino. He writes thirty to forty thousand a month over the phone, and 
he, the other week, I think he put in 400 calls before he got his first pickup. Two days of, of just nothing, no full pitches, right? And then he ends up writing a bunch of business. That's the kind of effort you guys have to have. And with telesales, I mean, that's true about any sales. It's an activity-driven business model. But with telesales, I don't know what it is. It's more magnified and difficult. Maybe it's just sitting at home and you're dialing the number and you're listening to call signals, busy signals, voicemails. It's just, it's a time on task thing. You know, so my advice to you guys is you got to put in the time. If you're going to take Telcel seriously, it needs to be full time. I would be putting in eight to 10 hours of actual talk time plus call time minimum um, because the more time you're on task, the more people you're going to talk to. And if you're doing anything less than that, there's a variation in results that just isn't as superior. So um, that's it. Uh, Rich, uh, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your business, man. Thanks for taking what we teach and putting it into action. Uh, I'm, I can speak for Tim here. We're su super grateful for you. Thanks 100%. And guys, if you're interested in uh, learning about how we operate in the telesales space or the face-to-face -face final expense space, check out daviddufordcom forward slash FAQ. Uh, you can go there and read about how our business model works, how mentorship works. We talk about commissions, expectations on investment for leads. We actually have a free lead program for face-to-face -face agents called our career program. And then if you like what you see, you can just simply click the apply button in the menu at the top of the page and apply. We have an application, an interview process. We don't accept everybody because we're super committed to our agents. We want to make sure you're just as committed as well.